So at this point you gather all the input parameters that are necessary uh, to run probabilistic hazard assessment, right? And this is what we want to do now, the stochastic sampling of eruption source parameters and wind condition for various styles of eruption. So again, I recommend you check first this paper, Bernard Donat 2006, where it lays uh, and reviews uh, the, 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 the initial eruption scenarios, probabilistic eruption scenarios. And we have pushed the things a bit further with this one paper in order to try to, to, to produce different styles of eruption, including long lasting eruptions. So let's go back to, to the first um, two basic in scenarios that we have for what we call subplanian plinian eruption. The first one we're going to consider is a one eruption scenario, in which case um, eruption source parameters such as height, mass, total grains distribution, uh, eruption duration are fixed deterministically. So, for example, you know of an eruption and you want to assess the, the what could have been the spectrum of this eruption in various wind fields, that's what you would use. So, again, what we want to do is to run a large number of simulations in order to express the probability of exceeding uh, given hazardous uh, tephra accumulation. So typically we run a thousand simulation, for example, which is specified by this NR, number of run. So these parameters here are fixed, we know them. And what we want to do is at each loop of our codes, we're going to sample an eruption date and the eruption date is going to be constrained within uh, the wind data that uh, the wind population that we downloaded. Okay, so we get an eruption date and we get the wind that is the closest to this eruption date. And then we just, um, I, you can aggregate if you want uh, the total grain size distribution. Again, for that, I recommend you refer to the paper, the user manual and the Bonadona 2002 paper on Montserrat. And then we run the model and we restart our loop. Okay. So in this case, again, eruption source parameters, a fixed wind is varying. If we want to also vary the eruption source parameters, we're going to sample at each of our loop, we're going to sample a height, duration, eruption date, and a mass, I'll go to that a bit later. But which means that we need to define ranges of plume height in which the sampling will occur and ranges of duration, etc., etc. So in order to get realistic sampling of uh, eruption source parameters, okay, so for example, I have a height on a side and a mass on the other side, and I want to avoid sampling a very low plume height and at the same time a very high mass, we implemented just a simple test. So the mass is indirectly sampled from the plume height and the duration and the eruption date. And that is how it works. We first sample a plume height, then a duration, then an eruption date. Okay? The eruption date helps us to retrieve the wind. And using the formulation of the Greuter and Bonadonna for the mass eruption rates, from the height and the wind speed that we get from the eruption date, we can get the mass eruption rate. From the mass eruption rate and the duration, we can get a mass. Then if we use this approach, we also define boundaries of masses in which we want this mass i to fall in okay and if it fall with falls within the range we accept the run else we resample it <coughs> excuse me so this is just a way to have a control uh, of sampling heights and mass in realistic sets of uh, eruption source parameters if you're not happy with that you can also sample the mass independently from the plume height. So that's really up to you. 
So now, remember that each wind profile is every six hour, thanks to uh, this reanalysis data. So one new eruption scenario that we did is a long lasting eruption scenario. And how tha does that work is that if an eruption lasts for longer than six hours, we're gonna run two simulations of the model. For example, let's say that I have a sample in eruption that lasts for 10 hours. I'm gonna have a first part of the eruption that lasts for six hours and the other part that lasts for four hours, okay? So exactly here, I sample an eruption duration and I split the total duration into six hours bits, okay? And in this different bits, I'm gonna assume that eruption conditions remain constant. So now for each of my run, I split into these different sets of bits of eruption for which I get the corresponding wind, I sample the plume height and I calculate the mass eruption rate and the mass and now if the sum of this mass is within the range we accept the run else we restart the sampling okay and this uh, eruption scenarios become important for such eruptions as like IFF La Yucatel or this Cordon Cauge one so another type of eruption scenario that is introduced in Tefa Club is our eruption scenarios for Filkinian explosion, okay? This is explored in a paper that is under review in Bolton of Volcanology about the hazard of Filkinian explosions at Vilcano Island in Italy. So as soon as it's out, you can check it out and it's gonna be really described in details there. So one assumption that we do for this type of Vulcanian, a uh, small Vulcanian explosion is that plume heights are thermal. Okay, so it's inst instantaneous uh, release of mass. And from this, um, the, the heights of the, um, this thermal, you can retrieve the mass. Uh, the reference for that again is the papers of Bernard Donat 2002 about monster rats. So go check that out, go check the, um, the user manual. Uh, so in this case, we don't attempt, well, the mass, the mass is automatically linked to the plume height. Okay, so if we want to, to do just hazard assessment for single explosions, we have a height, uh, the duration is very short, and then we have a t total green size distribution, and then from the height, we calculate the mass, and we get the eruption date, the wind, and we just run like that single explosion. Same for eruption range scenario, except that here you input um, uh, a range of heights and we sample um, a height within this range at each of these uh, thousand runs. So although it was already considered, the hazard of single Vilkinia explosions was already considered one thing that was uh, largely ignored is the hazard uh, due to, to long-lasting uh, Vulcanian eruptions, and that's what we try to solve with this long-lasting eruption range scenario. In this case, um, we are sampling, we are simulating, for example, a thousand Vulcanian cycles. So really long, heavy simulations. This this might. Y y I don't think you're going to be able to run this kind of, of simulations on a single CPU. You're going to have to go on uh, onto clusters. But first we start, remember that a run is a Vulcanian cycle. So we start, we get a first eruption date for the eruption and a duration. Okay, let's say that a duration can last between three weeks and three years, for example. And so what, we, wh what we're gonna do is for each of these uh, thousand Vulcanian cycle, we're gonna sample repose intervals, okay? And this is crit very critical for this Vulcanian eruptions. So we're gonna sample repose intervals and we're gonna keep on sampling repose intervals until the sum of these uh, repose intervals exceed the duration, uh, sorry, the duration that we set here, okay? 
And so we have a T0, we sample the repose interval, so it's T0 plus this Ri, for which we sample the heights, we get the wind, we calculate the mass as we did before, okay. And then the hazard of each of these um, thousand Vulcanian cycles is the contribution of each explosion of the, the cycle. So for now, it considers zero erosion. It's an assumption, it considers the maximum hazards. But again, uh, check the paper when it's released and check the user manual and you're gonna have more details.